All right, welcome to another day of Ether Raids. We're taking on Xeon Wolf here. Uh, we're gonna use the same team. It's, um, I guess it's gonna be that type of week. It's a uh, pretty fun team. So we're just gonna use it as much as we can. Uh, this one is a little bit, um, I feel like I say tricky a lot. <laughs> I do, don't I? Um, but yeah, this one's a little bit tricky uh, in the sense that in order to approach this properly, you probably don't wanna tank that uh, Nino because she's probably gonna outspeed you. And same with the Kavas there. Uh, she may not necessarily win the speed check, but she won't die unless you have some type of damage reduction piercing unit. Um, so what we're gonna do instead is that we're gonna break the uh, breakable blocks, which uh, as I said before, is one of the flaws with this specific map. Um, and initially when this map came out, those two blocks were not unbreakable. So basically you had a three lane block um, and you forced your opponent to have to initiate through uh, one of the middle lanes, which was absolutely disgusting. Or you could do um, two of the middle lanes and just have a two lane blo um, block it off like this, but you get what, I, what I'm saying. Uh, this map was very, very toxic it when it, when it uh, was first introduced. So they made the blocks, the blocks breakable instead. Uh, I don't like the fact that they made both of the blocks breakable. It should have still been at least one of them uh, that was unbreakable. Um, that would have made this map a lot more usable. Everybody just kind of stopped using it after that. Um, it just didn't have the same oomph. <laughs> but um, yeah, what I'm going to do is um, take advantage of the breakable structures here. Uh, and uh, we're going to initiate uh, potentially on this section. And then from there... Um, we'll take on everyone else as they come. Uh, we do have the Winter Edelgard on the opponent's defense as well. So just to show you how popular this unit is, I'm pretty Maybe sure that if not everyone, most um, most of the people who summoned picked up that unit. So you're going to be seeing her just as often as you would have seen Summer Edelgard. So be on the lookout for that. I think she's a, sh a shoe in for um, Hero Rises alongside uh, Sanaki and probably this Dimitri as well. I think this Dimitri should get in there um, with a couple of votes. Um, I don't believe Dual Byleth will get in there because they're just units that are too powerful. Um, I mean, maybe they'll get voted in, but I don't think they're going to win. Uh, I think the winner might be this Winter Edelgard because she is just that good. Uh, or if the Dimitri fans decide to I don't know, really push for it, this Dimitri uh, has a big shout, I feel. Uh, well, in terms of like um, merges or you know fodder, not necessarily. We well, will deliver. in terms of comparison, I think the Dimitri here has the best fodder and uh, the most usage when it comes to merges. That Winter Edelgard doesn't need merges. Am I uh, the fodder isn't that fantastic. So uh, I would probably push for the Dimitri to win, um, and then the Byleth. The Byleth. Mm, not that good. I mean, save unit, they're gonna get power crept. There's gonna be stronger nukes, so they'll fall off, as I said, in about three weeks. <laughs> three weeks, and they'll fall off um, completely. Uh, just like they did with uh, that, that um, Corrin, um, Brave Corrin. She's pretty much like falling off a cliff uh, a couple weeks after she came out. So, what I'm gonna do here to initiate the defense, I'm gonna beat this uh, Hell. Um, because of her warp range, I'm going to make the, uh, the defense move. Since there's no dancers, it's a safe thing to do. Um, it was either this or um, try to work with the reposition, go up there, hit Kvesser, and then um, get Kanto controlled and only move back one space. Um, the problem with that is uh, it's a little bit too far up for my liking. I don't know if Dimitri will be able to take out that... Um, What's his face? Uh, Legendary Robin. Uh, I'm pretty sure he'll kill Nino. He's been killing my Nino, so I was pretty sure he'd take out the uh, the Nino. But I don't know about the Legendary Robin because he has so much health. So, uh, yeah, didn't want to initiate that far up, but uh, I'll probably do it from right here since uh, it's a lot more controlled. Um, but let me just double check just to make sure that I'm not doing anything dumb. <laughs> Uh, I think it should be fine from this close in. Um, the problem here is I, I because of how the uh, layout of the map is, 
wouldn't have been able to successfully go in with um, Winter Edelgard and then get back out because of the, the threat range. Um, it would have been better if um, Summer Edelgard and had the uh, health Edelgard. required to uh, escape the hex trap. In which case, I could have just initiated on um, what's her face, uh, Nino. Could have initiated on Nino and then uh, potentially oh, backed out. Yes. Um, which would have significantly reduced the threat range and uh, worked out in my favor. But that was an option, so uh, we had to do it like, like this. Um, and also, I didn't necessarily want to break these blocks here because it reduces their movement down to this lane that's that I opened intentionally. Um, we will deliver. It's going to be a little bit challenging to get the pots. I said challenging instead of tricky. <laughs> um, because hell is going to be a problem. I don't want to bait her out because I'm pretty sure Dimitri is going to sweep everyone here. Uh, except maybe that Edelgard, but I don't know if she's going to attack or not. But yeah, um, Ready when you I'm going to leave Hell um, in the space that she's we in or wherever deliver. she moves to. Um, and since she's going to be the last unit here, getting is the pots is going to be really challenging. Um, Dimitri is pretty much able to outspeed everything because of Panic Smoke 4. It gives him so many stats, man. It's ridiculous how much it buffs his speed. Um, and it's not only that, but it also, it, it creates such a big stat swing. I, I really, like, I know it's a good skill, but it is a really, really good skill. Um, I used to use it a lot on uh, my range Let's units swim. when I had the catcher ball. Um, Cecil, uh, Sel uh, Ascended Celica in particular, but... I will um, deliver. Yeah, I had to, at, at a certain point, I kind of had to stop because I needed the speed. Um, so I went with um, uh, Colorless Feud instead, but it's still a, such a, like if you have a unit that's fast enough or doesn't necessarily require a, a speed check, uh, it's a very, very good skill, Panic kind of Smoke 4, and it, it is fantastic on this Dimitri. You're just gonna see him absolutely demolish everything here. Um, and, uh, Firing that Elgar, who I'm surprised didn't go first because she could reach. Uh, she's not going to be able to reach anymore, so maybe she doesn't kill. I don't know. Is this what but, you wanted? Yeah, you're going to see him pretty much solo this, and then I just have to figure out how to get the pots from there. 99, and this Nino is not slow, but um, pairing her with Legendary Robin isn't necessarily the best idea. Uh, because she works off uh, Blade Tome effects, which probably sounds unfamiliar to those who haven't been playing the game for a long time, but basically she needs everyone around her to have buffs. Uh, that way she gets blue buffs um, or more stats in combat, and Robin is basically the opposite of that. Uh, he debuffs everyone, so uh, yeah, not good synergy there. So this is the, uh, the problem now. How do I get the pots? And I can't take out this hell because traps. What's next? Um, Edelgard, apparently, I'm not able to kill. Uh, we will so deliver. we're going to have to think this through. What is it? Um, but yeah, the pots are so far in the back, which was another reason that they changed this map, uh, the breakable blocks to, um, or from unbreakable to breakable because it was so easy to hide the block, the pots in the back and your opponents Come just on. had no Ready way to really want. get around this map uh, when it first came out. Um, but as I was saying, I, I really think they should have left at least one of the structures as unbreakable. Um, it would have made this map a little bit more useful. I haven't been a big fan of any of the maps that they've really released since then. Um, a lot of them are just like open terrains, uh, which isn't good for defense building um, unless you're building like some type of rushdown team I mean you can probably use that uh, but they haven't been releasing any maps with um, you know unbreakable structures uh, in a long long time uh, they haven't done I think there's only like one or two left right now and I, I feel like we need like one more just to like add some variety um, it doesn't have to be like the same layout. Well, it's not going to be the same layout. They're going to make it different, but I feel like we need one just to make things a little bit more interesting on defense. So you can see uh, some different compositions. 
because it does the placement of the structures Who does affect how you lay out your team. Good morning. Um, yeah, struggling to take out this uh, Edelgard here. Um, Dimitri obviously can't do it, which is a big surprise to me. I thought Very he would have well. been able to clap this, but uh, Uller being useless as Ready usual. Um, that's actually pretty close uh, to a one shot. It looks like she's I just one shot in him back. Um, I might have to break the structure here just to see if my Edelgard stands a chance uh, at just, you know, bringing down her stats. Uh, that should help. And then from there, it's just the avoid hell game. Uh, even though we could gamble and try to take out hell, um, but that still leaves Dimitri in some problems because he wouldn't be able to get out of her range. Uh, this is looking okay. We will deliver. Mm. Is there any way for me? Oh, right. Uh, no more dual For units here, and I have uh, Summer Edelgard who has bonus doubler on her dual button, so I'm probably going to do that actually. Uh, that should be enough of a stat swing for Dimitri to uh, finish this off. Uh, so I'll do that and then avoid um, Hell. Yeah, that's probably going to be the plan. Um, What's next? And we do get the kill on Hell, but yeah. Not gonna do that. I w I'm very surprised. It's probably down to the fact that he is um, breaking the guard bearing, uh, so he's basically ignoring her guard bearing, which leaves just her miracle. And once it's just Who's her miracle, next? he just needs to outspeed to get the we kill. We will deliver. All right. I'll face it. Let's do this. We will settle. Keep forgetting to fix so that uh, HP, but she actually has max dragon flowers, so I probably Come would on. need to uh, change her traits. Uh, she currently has plus res. Now, Kanto 2, I do need to escape Hell's range. After. We will deliver. So it'd have to be from here. Which would allow me enough space to get away. Yeah. Alright. I really wanted to fodder both of the Dimitris, but after seeing his matchups, uh, particularly against nin uh, Ninja Sanaki, uh, if you um, set it up properly, he can actually tank Sanaki, which I found, I was very surprised when I saw it, because she would have been the unit that I would have expected to hard counter him, but if you know how Sanaki plays, once you have a unit that's solo, she doesn't necessarily do I all that well it. into them. Uh, in terms of damage output, and she really struggles uh, against this Dimitri, but uh, I was thinking that red, red versus green, she'd do just enough damage to just kill him regularly, but she simply doesn't. He gets so many uh, stats from uh, the Panic Smoke 4 that his res is just high enough to be able to withstand a combat against Ninja Sanaki. Oh, yes. uh, I had to use, if, if you're like, planning on countering him, you're probably going to need either some type of sweep effect or some type of uh, pre-charge special, which he does neutralize with his uh, panic smoke uh, in his uh, in his B skill, his uh, whatever that's called, bestiality, I think. <laughs> maybe, I don't remember what it's called, but he neutralizes uh, pre-charge specials, so it's a, a little bit you. challenging if you want to take this guy out. Um, and also, he can live a hit. He can live a couple of hits. So you're definitely going to need a dance because outspeeding him is is not happening. As I said, he gets so many stats from the Panic Smoke Forward, such a big stat swing that you're just not going to outspeed him. So I'm going to reposition up, uh, use charge to break that block, and that should allow us to be in position for both spots. So good turn. But yeah, I was very surprised at how impressive Ugh, stupid hell <laughs> all right so that basically blocks off one of my paths towards the I'll pot and i actually just realized that i don't have charge since she moved out of my range uh so this definitely changes everything uh all right how do i do this now oh yes
So yeah, uh, in the meantime, let's talk some more about yeah, Dimitri. Yeah. Um, yeah, so very, very strong, as I've been saying. Uh, I, I think in terms of like Omni tanks, uh, I don't think there's going to be another unit like Ready him you um, for the foreseeable future. I mean, if they start putting out more units with Vantage, they better start being a, uh, putting out it? more hardy bearing. Um, to counter it because it's it, it's just not deliver. sustainable uh no way that this playstyle vantage playstyle is going to be um something that's not going to break the game uh, because basically you can't like if someone can like avoid taking damage in the way that uh marth Byleth, and now dimitri can uh, it's definitely going to break the game. It's definitely going to ruin next? like your, your your fun because what's going to happen is that to counter this, everyone is going to start running sweep effects and everyone is going to start running hardy bearing on their defense, which means <sighs> like no fun. <laughs> like that's basically like Let's swim. it just me. <laughs> it kills it kills the meta uh, and it's going to change the meta completely. And I really hope that I mean I've already been running like hardy bearing and sweep effects on pretty much all of my defensive teams but I don't want it to become a thing where you have to have it where it is right now like you have to have some type of speed check to like I outspeed God's words or um, some type of uh, like you know how triangle attack was like mandatory to take out saves where you kind of don't necessarily need it now because the nukes are so strong Hardy Baron will become that where you need uh, Hardy Baron to stop vantage effects um, and it, I don't know, man. It's it's probably going to break the meta if they go down that route. And I feel like it's such a premium playstyle that you don't want to you don't want to force it onto the player base because, well, not that you don't want to force it onto the player base. You don't want it being too available to the player base. Ready this is something that Come I on. would like as a business. I probably have this we like pay to win lock because it's Who's so good. Which is why you haven't like seen so many of the Bernies. They've mainly been using the Bernies as a gatekeep to that particular playstyle for Vantage. Um, because it's a lot harder to set up than what Dimitri does, which is just he hits you and then he can Vantage. Um, I will deliver. Or next? I think like Good even morning. in his instance, it's Ready even the, because Byleth doesn't need to do anything. Uh, and Marth kind of just needs his friends to have stats. So at least there's some like some way to play around those but on. with dimitri he literally just hits you and he gets vantage and there's no way to really from stop him from phone. doing that you can't stop him from hitting you <laughs> because oh, your defense yes. isn't gonna move out of the way you know so i don't know man i hope they don't like go down this route in terms of um needed? like making units or when they're releasing units because they, they already do, they've already done so much that has like in my opinion negatively impacted the meta um or accelerated the meta to a point that it didn't necessarily need to be i feel like where the game is right now we could have held off for like another year before they pushed the amount of power that is currently in the game uh onto us it could have waited like yes. at least another year or two uh it, it doesn't need to be so toxic, you know? Like, really, they could have waited. They really could have waited. Um, but it looks like we get both pots here. I'm very happy about that. Uh, this has been quite annoying. Um, right now, I just got to figure out how to kill Hell and also get What's the pot. Uh, I think it? we're going to have to Come use Peony in some capacity here, as well as the Smite. Um, to get that second pot and I think it might be possible I have a little bit of we an idea uh, something like this but I can't use Dimitri because I need Dimitri to kill hell so that leaves and me Nerthuz and Ready when you are. I think we can do it with Nerthuz for all life on land hmm on a side note, uh, I've actually just like recently read the latest chapter of uh, One Piece, and man, uh, Bonnie, Bonnie, uh, Bonnie's backstory is a lot sadder than uh, I would have even thought it would be. Um, yeah, she seems like a pretty major character to the story, 
um, alongside Kuma, who, oh, yeah, you kind of figured that Kuma was like important to the plot, <laughs> but it does give a, a lot more insight into what's going on there. But yeah, Bonnie um, didn't expect that backstory. Um, yeah, I've been reading the manga instead of watching the anime because, man, I, I think like the. Um, the the cast or the voice actors for the anime are probably gonna like die before the actually get to the end of the story for one piece which is crazy to think about because my god how long has this been going on and they are already super old i'm talking like they're in their 50s um but then again japanese people live really long so who knows but uh ggs